joined uh, now here on Worldview by Moses Odhiambo, who's a political analyst. Moses, thank you for your time today. So, You're welcome. The deputy president, as we've just seen in the clip uh, that played before we spoke to Francis, says uh, they're making an attempt to change the narrative to development away from politics and individuals. Do you think they have managed to do that with uh, all the projects they've initiated over the four years? Uh, Yvonne, I would just like to remind you that this is the election year, and obviously everybody would be trying their best to woo the Kenyan you know, voter. Uh, Jubilee, as the ruling party, have definitely had some successes in their projects they promised Kenyans. But I think uh, Kenyans are not feeling the, the real impact of, of, of their developments. I think, for example, if you look at the, the economy generally, Jubilee promised us that they would have a double-digit growth. I don't think that is happening. People have been crying about, you know, their expenses going up. People have been crying about unemployment. We have not seen the latest figures, but obviously I'm sure it, it, it's very low and people are not happy. So changing the narrative is not going to be easy for them. And we know it's coming at the time when, you know, elections are near. So obviously it, it works for them. But at this stage, I think uh, Kenyans would be the jury. Uh, the narrative is not easily going to change from politics to uh, development because in Kenya we know the two are so interlinked and for business and development to grow we must have the right leadership in place. All right, Moses, uh, you know, people talking about the timing of this, we have four months to the general election yeah. uh, at this point. Um, so are we saying that it is not possible to start to discuss development agenda at a time when there's politics that's reigning supreme? Because this portal is um, supposed to help people track development. And, you know, if it's SGR, which is one of the biggest projects uh, that the Jubilee administration has undertaken, to be able to track that and say, where are we? How much money has been spent? What more needs to be done? Um, do you think the timing is off in terms of the fact that Kenyans can't discuss development when there's politics? Or is the timing just perfect for Jubilee because this is an opportunity for them to tout their developments ahead of the election? I think Jubilee has been, you know, blowing up their trumpets on what they've achieved and what they've planned to do for the country over the last four years they've been in power. So I think having a portal doesn't necessarily, necessarily translate into people getting to know more about what they're planning to do. I think it's probably them using the portal to reach more to the people and probably explain in details where they are with their projects. But I don't think that is necessarily going to change people's minds. I think pe people who already are pro-Jubilee will remain pro-Jubilee. Uh, people who are going to vote NASA are definitely going to vote NASA. There are obviously a few, you know, undecided voters, mm -hmm. and probably that might work for Jubilee, but it can also work against them in the sense that they promise us something within the last four years and they've not achieved. So trying to explain to people that, oh, you know, SGR was supposed to be at this stage, we have not reached this stage, can actually work against them. Okay, but some say, uh, compared to uh, previous administrations, we've yeah. seen the Kibaki regime uh, and, and, and the ones before that, that this administration has gone out of its way to explain to people, um, you know, where they are um, in places where, you know, it even exposes some of the the challenges that they've had in fulfilling some of their promises. Um, what's your, what would you say to that? I think it's good to give credit where it's due. I think the Jubilee administration has been very open about what they are doing. And also we've, we've seen what they've done compared to other governments. I think, for example, the, the free maternal care services that they've offered is something that other governments didn't do. Uh, we've seen the, the, the SGR. When it comes to fruition, obviously will be a game changer for transport in sector. But, I mean, it's not everything. I think being in leadership for four years probably is not enough time to transform the country uh, to the Which is probably that, why they're asking for another four years, Yeah, I right? think the question <laughs> is, do they deserve four years after spending, I mean, another five years? By the way, this is the only government that has been power for four years. Right, More yes. Previous governments have mm -hmm. been power for five years. Mm -hmm. But the question is, should we give them more time to complete the projects that they started or should we say that, no, your, your pace is unbelievable, it's a source nail, we need to jumpstart a lot of things. Do they deserve more time, do you think? 
Uh, in my view, in my view, there there have been issues that uh, I've really had uh, question marks on. For example, do we want to see the runaway corruption continuing for the next five years? Do we want to see party? I mean, the country divided along ethnic lines. I mean, people don't feel they're. Not everybody feels they're part of the Jubilee government. Mm -hmm. We need a government that is going to bring Kenyans together. Do we want to retain the status quo? Retaining Jubilee basically means we are retaining the status quo as things are right now. What are your final thoughts in terms of, um, you know, the situation we find ourselves in in the country? Uh, I mean, development has been a big conversation, uh, you know, with the Jubilee administration, obviously saying this is what we've done, this is what we've been able to do. Yeah. Um, you know, in certain cases, they've also been plagued with uh, corruption scandals, uh, like you've talked about. Um, a lot of Kenyans saying we can't feel this economic growth. Um, others saying we're over borrowing and, uh, you know, and then some economists say, well, a lot of what they're putting in is long term uh, sort of benefits that will be felt five, 10, perhaps even 15 years from now. Um, but what should we be focusing on in terms of trying to have a meaningful discussion about where the country is uh, with respect to development? I think it's good to be ambitious, uh, but we have to remind ourselves that we are a third world country. We still depend on things like agriculture. Uh, our manufacturing sector is not doing so well. So people's lives need to be touched and you know, realistic changes need to happen in people's life for them to feel that the government is serving them. So in terms of our development agenda, I think we should focus more on how we transform lives other than thinking big. It's good to think big. I mean, it's good, for example, to have the biggest airport in the mm -hmm. world. It's mm -hmm. good to have the, the, the fast tube train. But what about the daily lives of Kenyans? Do they afford you know, health, do they, are they able to afford food? Do you think you there's know? a middle ground between the two having, you know, I mean, there's a, quite a bit of foreign direct investment they're talking about in the country. Is there a middle ground between the two? And, and, and where does then politics uh, come into the fray? I mean, for example, can we afford to have, uh, you know, the standards of living go down, even while we make very huge investments in infrastructure? For me, something I've always said is, uh, we need to reach a stage where we are able to split our politics from the business. I mean, the moment we do that, we will be on a trajectory of growth because we'll have the right people in the right places driving our economy, and we'll have the right people doing their politics. So whatever they do, the decisions they make should not necessarily impact the growth of our economy, for example, should not uh, impact my you know, daily you know, life. But in, in a situation we find ourselves in, uh, politics is so much into our lives to the extent that what your MP does directly affects your livelihood. Mm. Now, you can be a prudent business person, but because tenders and, and, and shares or whatever you want to call them have been manipulated, you might not practice your business fairly or transparently. Mm -hmm. So until and unless business is split from politics, mm -hmm. it's very hard to have that middle ground you are talking about. Because there are genuine people who want to do genuine businesses, or there are genuine politicians who want to practice genuine poli politics. Right, right. But there are also people who are in politics who want to do business. Right. I mean, they need to make up their mind. Uh -huh. So those are the things pulling us back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. That's Moses Odhiambo, who's a political analyst, joining us now talking about um, the Jubilee development agenda that is something that they are focusing on today and perhaps in coming days as the Jubilee administration celebrates uh, four years in power. Thank you very much, uh, Moses. Stay with me for just a moment because...